Hello and welcome to Kick Talk Reboot. We're concentrating on the West of Scotland Cup, which took place today, and there was lots of uh, action-packed encounters and a few surprise results along the way. So, firstly, it's on to the results. Uh, West Region, New Coins Holdings, West of Scotland Cup. Ashfield 3, Rutherglen 1. Auchinleck 1, Carluke 0. Benbub 5, Lanark 1. Blantyre 0, Beath 1. Cambuslang 3, Muirkirk 0. Cumnock 9, Glasgow Perthshire 1. Dunnypace 0, Gartcairn 1. Glenafton 2, Govan 3. Kosaith 2, Vale of Leven 2. Kosaith won 7 6 on penalty kicks. Kowinning 2, of a Meadow 3. Lag Sissel 3, Bells Hill 1. Mary Hill 1, Winton 1. Mary Hill 1, 6 5 in penalties. Neilston 3, Port Glasgow 0. Peters Hill 0, Whitlets 0. Whitlets 1, 4 2 in penalties. Renfrew 1, Lark Hall 4. Royal Albert 0, Pollock 5. Shedson 2, Rossvale 0. Shots 3, East Kilbride 1. St Rocks 6, New Mains 0. Vale Clyde 1, Wishaw 2. Yoka 2, Mabel 3. Now I was at Barfields Park Largs where the score was Largs Thistle 3, Bells Hill 1. Now there may have been two divisions separating these sides today but Largs had to use all their guile to come out of this encounter with a good win. Thistle, without a win in the previous four games, got off to a strong start with Alec McWater's covering ball on the right hand side being met by Scott Adams' glancing header which finished a low into the bottom left hand corner of the net. 1-0 in 6 minutes. Bells Hill were creating chances though they should have done better from one dangerous opening as a cross from the right was headed wide by Paul Brennan. A clumsy challenge though on wing back Martin Orr by a Bells Hill defender resulted in a large spot kick on 16 minutes and Adam stepped up to coolly send the keeper the wrong way. 2-0 in 16 minutes and this was a great chance to move 3 up in 23 minutes but McMaster's header went wide. Tricky feet from McWaters on the edge of the D tested the Bells Hill defence and he was chopped down. The free kick awarded resulted in a sumptuous free kick from McWaters from 25 yards out crashing in off the underside of the bar. So Largs were really going great guns at this point but Bells Hill were still putting Largs under pressure with regular attacks. Start of second, hill, second half, Largs keeper Sean Graham had to punch away one high ball as he came under pressure from forwards in the box. Poor finishing uh, from the visitors provided a couple of let-offs for Largs, but Martin Orr duly assisted by sending Robert O'Donnell's cross into his own net to give Bells Hill a lifeline on 72 minutes. So 3-1, um, and the Lancashire side suddenly had renewed confidence throwing men into attack but it meant that they were exposed to the back they conceded another free kick as Alec McWaters stepped up again but this time he thundered his free kick off the crossbar um, Bells Hill had a late chance but blazed over the bar Lags went straight into attack with Adam clean through but he was denied his hat trick by Bells Hill keeper Joseph Brand who made an excellent slave to block, block the ball which was subsequently cleared so all in all it was an entertaining match Lags were too good in the end and they, they their class really shone through so final score at Bathurst Park Lags so 3 Bells Hill 1 after the game I spoke to Lags manager Stuart Davidson. Right, I'm with uh, Stuart after Lagsus's 3-1 win over Bells Hill. You'll be happy with that, a convincing victory? Yeah, uh, well, looked convincing on the scoreline, um, but Bells Hill gives it a really hard game. Uh, and they fought to the end, even though we went 3-0 up, they still made it very hard for us. So, uh, listen, it was all about getting into the next round, and, and uh, obviously we were looking to keep a clean sheet. We've lost too many goals lately, but... Uh, Martin's put one in at the back post in his own goal, but that's, that happens sometimes. But delighted to, to get the win. A wee bit of tinkering <coughs> in the team as well today with Martin going further back and uh, um, it's certainly um, you know, bringing Liam McVeigh in as well. Yep. I will, um, we've been losing three goals a game for the last four, four games or something, so I just feel, felt as if things had to change a wee bit. Uh-huh. Um, and I, I thought it, it looked solid at the back, so... Um, that's something we'll think about for next week as well. 
and the goals were great today. Hi, hi, some great finishes. Um, uh, we, Alex, obviously the the free kick that was a, a really good goal as well, and he nearly done it again in the second half. So. Um, no, I was, I was delighted. Some great goals. And I thought it was important we go ahead early because they, they, they give us a right fight, so it gives us a wee bit of cushion. Um, so it's it just I always say it's so important to start the game as well and try and get on top, and that's what we've done today. Yeah, absolutely. And uh, you know, Alec like Waters he even hit the bar as well. And the second half, there could be more goals. Scott Adam, great Aye. save at the end as yep. well. Listen, I, I was disappointed, obviously, not to get any more goals in the second half. Yeah. Um, but that, that's all down to Bells Hill because they worked really hard and they, they restricted us. Um, but aye, I'm being greedy in saying that I wanted more goals. Aye, that's that show. <laughs> um, Mary Hill next week in the league, uh, yep. bottom of the table, <coughs> away from home though, and they've picked up a bit since the last yep. time we played them. Yep. Oh, that, listen, it's going to be a tough game, especially after uh, we took a few goals on, off them the last time they were down here, and I know they'll be they'll be up for a battle and want to do something about that. It was, a, it was a wee bit kind of a battle last time we played them as well yeah. it's a couple of incidents and we need to be, make sure we're ready and up for that yeah. <coughs> brilliant Arnie ok well All done right, thank you very much and now it's over to Stuart McConnell who is at the big match between Cowling Rangers and Oven Meadow welcome to Abbey Park with the final score in this West of Scotland Cup first round tie was Cowling Rangers 2 Irvin Meadow 3 Irvin Meadow are back could be the headline from this scintillating West tie with the lower league team putting up a brilliant fight, tactical fight against their Premier League opponents and close rivals it was a corker or a belt of a match probably the best I've seen all season both teams going at it with Meadow having that possibly hungrier edge to them about their play under new manager Brian McGinty Buffs went ahead with the first action of the match in the opening minute when Craig Pettigrew smashed home a free kick from 22 yards only two minutes later it was all square when Ben Carson drilled home a free kick, the made of the skipper that is from a similar distance. Great chance came Cowinning's way in 11 minutes when a shot from just outside the box by Carlo Monte was well saved by Craig Gordon. The other end a minute later, visiting player Ryan Carnoff was booked for a rash challenge in home goalie Michael Wardrop. Long range effort from Carson was easily dealt with by Wardrop in 18 minutes. The other end a minute later, Ryan Nisbet Header was touched round the post by Gordon. Brian Boylan shot. Just wide from inside the box in 26 minutes as Buffs pressed for a second goal. Tommy Maitland then shot an early wide for the home team from 22 yards in 31 minutes and Nisbet sent a 20 yard shot curling just over the bar in 25 yards. Five minutes later, Buffs had a goal chopped off for offside when Nisbet raced into slot home from 10 yards just before the break, um, although it was a late flag. The host restored the advantage a minute after the interval when James Latta capitalising some slack defensive indecision to shoot under Gordon and into the net from 10 yards then Buffs came close in 50 minutes and Finlay Fry went in a darting run before shooting just over the bar from 25 yards however in 52 minutes it was all squared again when Yared Willett picked up a pass before rolling the ball home 10 yards Boylan surged forward before shooting narrowly over the bar from 20 yards in 57 minutes and Monty slipped a fine blue ball to Boylan who shot narrowly over the top from 8 yards in 63 minutes. 66 minutes Blaine Black shot just over the bar from Meadows where they really put pressure on their opponents and Meadows snatched the lead. The brilliant goal in 69 minutes when Willett outstripped the Buffs defence for a blinding run cut the ball back to Con Boyle who drilled it home from 10 yards. And that was three to- and thanks to Stuart for that blow by blow account from Abbey Park. And after the match, Stuart spoke to co winning manager Chris Strain. Um, ach, we didn't play well. Okay. Mm-hmm. I think they came with a good game plan, sat in, and they didn't come and try matches, which we, lost. we scored a goal, good start for us. Mm-hmm. Lost a poor goal, in my opinion, for the next one. Um, and we got ourselves in front again, but criminally, after doing the same thing in the first half, we lost the goal two minutes later. And the momentum swing, you can feel it, I can feel it at the sidelines. Yeah, yeah. Um, probably in my own opinion, I changed too much today to try and get mm-hmm. the better of them. Yeah, yeah. I was chopping and changing things to try and uh, stop them from sitting in and making it easy for them. But they, went, they deserved a win. Your money in the fucking... The, the, the man of the goal show was maybe the second half, yeah. disappointed with a very similar do you know, goals. Aye, do, do you know what? I mean... <laughs> 
when you're, when you're so much in the front foot, then you leave yourself open and exposed at times. And yeah. that's, that's what happened today. They took advantage of it and they did well. They had a good game plan and they won. Simple as that. Yeah. Yeah. I don't, I don't have any qualms about it. We should play better. Um, but again, it's just a bad day at the office for us. Yeah. Um, I don't want to take in and away for them. Deserved a victory. So, yeah. so cracker game. It's not. Oh, awesome, but you know. I'm bitterly like disappointed. Derby, the disappointment right? is yeah. that you warn them about certain things, and, and it is a derby. And I don't think we played it yeah. with enough intensity. Mm-hmm. That's my one, yeah. my one, my one thing that I would mm-hmm. say to them. It's a criticism of the players, and I'm not often critical of them because they've given a lot. As they lacked intensity at times today. Yeah. And Stuart then spoke to other middle manager Brian McGinty. Because you've got to, you've yeah. got to give Chris and his team respect. They've got yeah. a lot of quality uh-huh. players. Yeah, they're where they're in the top league. I mean, they're a league above us. So get. Uh, yeah. Some some excellent players I played with some of them, but I know most of them, <coughs> and they're, you know, they're real quality. So you, you can't come here. You come here and you go and play against uh-huh. them, you'll get beat because they've got uh-huh. really good players and they rip us apart. So yeah. uh, it was important that we went with a shape to, to stay in the game as long as we uh-huh. did, which didn't really work because we lost the goal uh-huh. after two minutes. But uh-huh. uh, no, it was important we stayed in the game as long as we could, and uh-huh. we obviously getting the goal back so early yeah. to go one each and, and then getting in the game. <laughs> I always knew if we were in it with 20 minutes to go, we'd have a chance. We were quality. Yeah, I knew yeah. we could hurt them, but we had to go and be hard to beat. It just seemed to have that fire in the second half, that kind of hunger that, that, that you know, that well, we've they told didn't the boys you can't, yeah. One of the things that we said when we first come in was you can't accept getting beat here. They're going uh, to get yeah. beat, and especially when you play teams that are, that are in the top league, yeah, you're yeah. Going to, you, might, you uh-huh. might go and get beat, but you've, you've got to have yeah. an acceptance that no matter what, you're going to try everything to stop yeah. getting beat. And yeah. Listen, we can set up whatever shape we want, but uh-huh. the boys the players have got to go and carry out what we ask yeah. them to do and if they don't do that then we look stupid at the side of the park and they look yeah. stupid but they, they carried out the shape today they went and do the performance uh-huh. yeah. we can only set them up in a certain way but yeah. they've been brilliant since we come in uh-huh. but we've just said to them in there it can't be the league's uh-huh. the most important thing yeah, for us uh-huh. and, it, and, it, and it always will be but uh-huh. this is a result that hopefully <coughs> it gives the club and the fans a wee thing to shout about the players deserve to go and have a, a good night out in the back here. yeah so happy celebrating to Oven Meadow after that result. That's the end for Kick Talk this week. Thanks for joining us. Goodbye.